Hi guys, uh, in this video I'm just going to give you a couple of more things about functions. Um, and the first thing is, this is now the function we had produced uh, in our previous videos. And we also um, have uh, located this uh, function in a file outside our main program. And what is helpful here is, uh, if, if, you, if you're going to distribute your function or this engine of yours to somebody else, it would be helpful for this somebody else to know, you know, what kind of inputs am I, uh, do I have to uh, input to this function? What form are they? Are they a dictionary? Are they a list? Are they separate entities? What kind of outputs does this function uh, uh, produce? And so on. So uh, comments are, are nice and well, but you need some sort of documentation that you um, distribute along with your function. And one thing for that uh, is in Python, it's called a doc string. And the doc string is basically a very simple thing is you just go open up three single uh, double quotes and you close the double quotes. And now in here, you can write whatever you want regarding that function. For instance, I've written the following. So this is the doc string I have for uh, this function. I've, I've added here a summary at the top and then the inputs, they're a dict or a dictionary and what they are and then are the outputs and what they are. So, and if I save that, then that is now a fully documented function. Now the question is how can uh, somebody uh, uh, call this function or basically call this help uh, 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 you know, this doc string. Well, the way it goes like this, let me just reduce that and we're back to our code. Let me just remove that. And here's the function, I'm importing it. Now, if I need to know what's in the doc string, I just go hell and convert units. That's the name of the function. And save that and now let's run that. And you should be getting my doc string here. And that's a doc string I've written uh, regarding that function. You know, so I've here convert value input by user from one into another, the inputs, dict, and so on, the outputs. So that's one way of, of getting that documentation uh, from that function. And by the way, you can also get yourself uh, the doc string from every standard function that you use in Python, for instance, help. Uh, for instance, print, we know that function. And uh, let me remove that. Save and F5. And, oh. Save and F5. And now we have here the documentation to the function print. Or you can call any other function, for instance, the function int or the function string or the function what, what len, for instance. This is one function we use, uh, F5. So here, that number of items in a container. So, so basically here uh, with doc string, people using your functions are able to access that documentation with the help function. So that's why I advise you when you have a function, when you write a function, uh, always add a doc string, be it for yourself or for somebody else. Uh, it's a very helpful thing because also for yourself, if you open that function in a year, uh, you wouldn't know, uh, you know, what the point of that function is and uh, required inputs and so on. Comments, on the other hand, are very helpful, but they come in single sections or a line in your code explaining why you did that or what, what you're doing here and the logic behind it. And uh, for instance, here I can add a comment, for instance, like, uh, you know, um, uh, use, use database instead of instead of instead of dictionary you know so on so that's that's the small count but the main doc string is here and you can also add like the details of your the, the details of your algorithm the details of your process of your function can all be added here in this doc string so uh, that's one helpful feature i would advise you to use in uh, in python especially with, with with functions or or any other further modules that you develop and either for yourself or for other people to use uh, another thing I would like to discuss uh, regarding functions is you can create empty functions. Let me remove all that. 
for instance, this is uh, an empty function. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't it's just an empty function. So when you when you build uh, uh, a program, uh, initially you have a layout, just similar like the way you would write a book or or a, or a big paper. You would lay produce a layout, and you would have your functions. You know. You need these functions, but you haven't done the details of these functions. So you just with pass, yeah, you, you have a, a function function, albeit not producing anything. Uh, functions also do not have to return anything. For instance, this is now a function, or let me return, let me copy that, it's much easier. For instance, uh, this function does not return a variable, but it produces uh, the sum. Uh, of these and uh, I don't need to you know I don't need to assign that function to a variable I just can call that function uh, well, let me give it another name because we've got two GHI for instance uh, if I call if I call the function GHI then uh, I would get oh I have to obviously add the parameters I'm gonna save it now uh, yeah F5 and now I get the sum of these two. So th this function just just prints the stuff out, doesn't return anything. So you've got these types of function and functions. And then uh, please be aware that uh, if I change that uh, to something like that, and this is going to produce an error because here. You have to remember one thing, there are two types of variables. There are global variables and there are local variables. Now, anything you do in a function takes place within this area here. This is tabbed in. Everything in here is local to the function. In this here, we're outside the function and C, that variable C is not known outside the function. So if I now save it and call, you will see it says, name c is not defined because the variable c is here unknown it is just known inside the function but not outside because c is a local variable only valid inside the function that's why if you're if you have functions uh i, ca I can use that c that c is very different from that c so let's let's have here a c which is equal to five okay and uh, let's say here print this is the global Okay, that's a global variable, and if I if I print uh, GHI uh, seven and ten, and let the function return C. So here we have two Cs. One is the local variable that should be seven plus ten is seventeen, and then we have the other one which is Basically, and we can do it the other way around, just for you to see uh, that there are two separate entities, even if they're called the same. And if I run that, I would have 17 and the global is 5. And these are two separate entities. This C here is local to the function. And you notice everything what's tabbed in, belonging to a function or whatever, is local to this area, to this tabbed in area. Put it this way. Whereas this one is outside, then it's local. Uh, it's 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 local to here. Everything here. So basically, it is it is, and it is. It does not. It does not. It does not apply to the function. It does not apply to the function, except if it's passed to the function. So this function does not know about C about this C, unless C is passed here as a further parameter. So that's one thing you have to know about. Um, about local and global uh, uh, functions and obviously like i said not all functions have to return something some functions don't return anything and some functions uh, print their uh, uh, whatever they return they print it out and some functions uh, don't require any parameters they just uh, you know they just do something which doesn't require any parameter so you've got all sorts of functions 
uh, that are available. And if you need an empty function, just a placeholder. Just use, just define the function as is, and then put a placeholder. And um, yeah, that about wraps up the the whole theme around functions. And um, uh, yeah, see you in the next video then.